exciting day out. This week we've come to one of the most delightful inland golf courses in the British Isles. The Notts Golf Club at Hollingwell, North Nottinghamshire. And with me, well, it's Michael Parkinson. Michael, welcome yes. and how's the game? I've not hit a ball for five or six months. Ah. Mm, should be quite fun of this. Anyway, I must tell you, I didn't hit a ball for the five or six months before <laughs> that either. So, <laughs> well, useless. we're on the 13th here, which is, a, as you can see, a very spectacular long short hole, 236 yards. Yeah. We're on the very back tee. Yeah. I thought, uh, you know, we ought to get you a, a good test, all sensible right. test. Okay, okay. Wind from the right, you can yeah. see all the trouble. One, two, three, four, five or six bunkers round the green. Uh -huh. So just, uh, just remember all those things that you've been told. Aim it a little bit left. What have you got there? Three? Three iron, yeah. Oh, no. Nice firm grip and hit it with the club head. Oh, well done. Now, if that pitch is in the gap, that's on the green. You see, it's the big match. Ten that's a very fine shot. That's probably one of the best shots I've ever played. That. Oh, well, a little bit delicate. I like a touch of the new Reyes here. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you a, two strokes on the long holes and a stroke on the short holes. All right. All right? Okay. Now, that's a bold thing to say, isn't it? But I know your short game's a bit shaky. Right, bad shot there. Oh, stay up. It may be in the bunker, my curl. Oh, no, it's over the bunker. Over to the left. Come on, round a bit. Oh, I'm just off the putting surface. So how would you describe the hole so far? Well, I think you're, with a stroke, you're in the, the driving seat. You reckon so? Michael, were you very serious when you sort of became the self-styled president of the Anti-Golf Association? <laughs> <laughs> no, it was just that... All my friends, one by one, were picked off by this sort of golf fever. And I was the only one who had to come to it. So I got this note paper and I had this sort of letter heading, the Anti-Golf Society, and I made myself the honorary president. No, truth be told, I mean, I uh, wished I'd taken up the game a long, long time ago because uh, it's, it's like any game. It's a marvellous game to play. And now I've finished playing cricket, it's... Uh, you know, something that's taking up more and more of my time, or I hope it doesn't. Yeah, because there, there are special things, I think there are special things about golf, the same mm. way as I'm sure you think there are very special things about cricket, mm. or mm. to a lesser degree, possibly, soccer. Mm. But uh, I think some of the uh, most wonderful writing has been done by people who followed golf. Yes, I don't think it's coincidental, actually, that two or three sports, actually, boxing, golf and uh, cricket, um, have attracted some really great literature, not just sports reporting, but great prose. I can see the link between cricket and golf and the attraction one to the other. Boxing's the odd man out in a strange kind of way, although I suppose it's more the most dramatic sport of all to write about. But cricket and golf, certainly, when you think of people like Longhurst and Darwin and golf, and then you think of people like Cardus and Robertson and Glasgow at cricket, I mean, it's, it's astonishing, their output mm. and the quality of their work. Well, that's an awkward little one. It's in a bit of a, of a hole there, isn't it? <laughs> now, you see... What would you be thinking about if you were going to play that shot? I'd be thinking, oh my Apart God, because I here. can't play this kind of game at well, all. Well, it's a lofted no club. Touch, yeah. A lofted club. It's in a little bit of a hole, so I, I put a bit more weight on the left foot, hands forward, break the wrist a little bit early, and just give it a little sort of bop like that. Pitch it two or three yards on the green, and hope it runs up to the hole. It's in a nasty little spot there. Oh, not bad from there. Not too bad from there. Now, they're medium fast, so just get the feel of it now. Just get the mental feel of it. That's good speed. Oh, stop it. I don't believe it. Ah! <laughs> Dear me. Get on! <laughs> now then, my well, that's what we're talking about. Uh, a gentleman it? would give you that. Yes, I know you would, but you're no gentleman. Well, I'm no gentleman. Yes, I know you long enough to know that. Well, oh, that's good. I can't do anything about that. Net two, three net two. That's Smash pretty it. good stir. Yeah. I shall have to send a letter to the handicapping committee. <laughs> Temple Golf Club. One of the fascinating things, I'm sure, for a lot of people, and perhaps 
your critics is the fact that, A, you delight in, in sort of letting everyone know that Barnsley was your hometown. That's right. End up writing for the Sunday Times, which is, you know, the Toffs paper, if you like, and then having tremendous goes at the establishment, yeah. particularly the sort of MCC Wolf Wall. Well, that be the yeah, sporting, the sporting stuff. In any sport. Why? That, well, I mean, was that an inverted snob? No, no, I don't think so. People have accused me of that. Yeah. But I think that... Uh, Mo the, the time when I wrote them, in the main, the attacks made about five or six years ago, I think most sports in this country are terribly badly served by their executive. I think one or two sports still are. I think there's still a great discrepancy and a gap between the people who run sport and people who play it in Britain. And I think it's a hell of a problem. Do you and think I it's getting better because a, lo a lot more people who played the game are now becoming administrators, or do you think that's a bad thing? I think thing? that's part of it, and I think that can only be a good thing. I also think, too, that a very, very good influence in the game is... Uh, the, the, the entrepreneurs, if you like, coming yeah. into it, the businessmen, who are making decisions on behalf of the executive, often, and on behalf of the players too. I think that's a very good thing for the game. Mm. I really do. But, but, but do you call sort of a Kerry Packer the sort of the greatest yes. entrepreneur of all in the... Yes, I mean, I mean, see, I, I disagree. I don't like a lot of what uh, Packer's done to cricket as a game. I don't like people dressing up like popping jays on a cricket field. On the other hand, it did the most significant thing that's been done to cricket. It made the executive aware that unless you pay the stars, the players, you don't get anywhere in the end. And for that, you'll be remembered. And for that, he did a very good job. Yes. But, but yes, I see... I uh, mean, I'd rather have Kerry Packer than some fuddy-duddy old colonel from Cheltenham. You know, yeah, well, but that's the way it was. Top, you know? <laughs> but that's the way it was. I mean, this so game's years. riddled with it too, isn't it, at times? Oh, but we're weeding them out, son. You are, eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one we're by weeding them out. Them off. Now, this hole, incidentally, talking about glorious and great amateurs, was one of Henry Longhurst, dear old Henry's favourite ah. holes. And when he compiled, and he was asked to compile any 18 holes or best holes in Britain, this was always amongst them. Really? Um, now, it looks to be a pretty generous driving area. What is it? We're on the back tees, 403 yards, tons of room down the left-hand side, but there are bunkers <laughs> which have been re designed a bit over the years and made a little bit smaller I think at least they look a bit smaller to me on the right hand side of the green so ideally you need to be down the right half of the fairway yeah. to get a good shot into the green it, you're safe left rather like playing at St Andrews you're safe left but it makes the second shot more difficult mm. a very good par four now for you one up you want to be aiming just along the edge of the rough there. I notice you're not, you're not, you, you don't leave the woods in the bag. I can't use woods at all, Peter. Oh, well, uh, you can't. put yourself in my hands. I'll get you using the woods. Is that a... Give promise? him the trusty iron. Uh, the number... What are you going to have? Three. Three iron. Uh, yeah. I shall be bold and take the driver. Good shot. A little bit of fade again, just not punching your full weight. That'll pitch just in the semi-rough, gets up. Oh, bad luck. You got a nasty kick. Yeah, just did didn't go? get on the fairway. You're just in the corner. That's all right. Uh -huh. That's all right. See, you, you're lucky, considering you've only been playing the game five minutes. You've got a good grip, basically a bit wooden, yeah. and a bit too much of this down there. If you can just tighten all that up, and just remember, you hit the ball with that, and don't be afraid to let it go. Some of the old... Uh, sayings in golf are still as valid today as they were 40, 50 years ago. Well, that could be perfect, Michael. If it just swings a little bit, that should be yeah. in position A1+. plus. It is. Just missed the bunker. Yeah. That was better, wasn't it? It was very good. It was, was a good, a good, mm. a good swing, <clears throat> a good hit. You're all right. You're just off the fairway on the left. You want to play up short of that bunker across the fairway and then pitch on. Use your strokes, very important. So many handicapped players forget that's what strokes are for. Use them. How do you mean? Don't waste strokes? them. Well, you've got two strokes here, so oh, whatever yeah. you score, you're going to knock two off. Right. So don't waste them. You're, down the f you're in the rough, but you're in not a bad shape. So if you just play down, you should at worst get a six. Yes. Which is a net four. Yes. Which, you know, <laughs> a four is a good hole for me. Yes. Yes. How often do you play now, Peter? Once a month. Do you really? I'd like to play more. Yeah. Right, so give it some umpty. That's a good shot. That'll do. You, again, your weight was a little bit back. You weren't really punching your full weight, but you're all right. See, that's pretty good. Where'd you get it? A bit on the toe end? Yeah. 
Yeah, see? Well, that's because you were just a little bit, well, we left-handed, you got the wrong, that was a bit yeah. up in the air, that right. instead of driving it forward there, you were a little bit tippy-toe, so you didn't really connect it's amazing that with the full they power. Part of the leg's plane again, isn't oh, it? Oh, yeah. yeah. So you've got an excess of leg movement, That's knee right. movement, yeah. so you can afford to eliminate that, yeah. to really try and just tense your leg muscles a little bit. Yeah. That You must have a good foundation, a good base, yeah. right? So that holds you up. Then you just all you've got to think about is really turning your shoulders. You've got a good grip. Get a nice solid grip with both hands, mm. and then just you, you see your swing goes up and down a good line too, which, yeah. is, which is very encouraging. And uh, you should soon pick it up. Uh, you know, it's amazing the number of, of, of sportsmen uh, in the various games that, that have a very good eye for a golf ball. I mean, yes. there are a lot of very good cricketers. I mean, yes. Tom, Tom Graveney, Brian Close, Dexter, Marvin Ted Blair. Dexter was a majestic mm. sort mm. of uh, golf. Colin Cowdery, good steady, a bit, a bit porky. Didn't really attack the golf ball as he did uh, on the cricket pitch mm. but uh, does does a, a boycott play golf at all yes he plays a very very good game of golf i mean he plays rarely and plays off about 14. does he you know and jackie hampshire's a marvelous player too there is a, an affinity in the game actually you know the, the, as you say that the, the swings not the same but yeah. the same kind of principle yeah the difference is the obvious one of course that you're hitting a moving ball at cricket yeah, and it's coming on to you that's right are you are you are you glad when you look going back though for a second with our talk about discipline and lords mm. and all the rest mm. of it and i know in your writings you've talked about national service which i think you've said didn't do you all that much harm. no no and of course you were again we we must hark back to the barnsley image and you were one of if not the youngest captain, captain or in the british army in the british army <laughs> now, how, i mean how does a lad from barnsley uh, become? i mean did you enjoy that i enjoyed it immensely i faced the enemy for the first time i mean the people i've been talking about i yeah. actually met them you know and how did you deal with it did you army. think uh, you ought to sort of pull them up a bit or did you say no, well, when we're alone call I, me I, mr parkinson no 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 <laughs> i've al i've always sort of uh, worked on the principle that you can't beat him join them you know but did, did well, you enjoy those days yes i enjoyed them immensely and i wish now that there was some kind of system i'm not advocating children be joining the army and going to war but i do think that a lot of kids about 18 19 the age i went in it does them good to go away from home it does them good to meet up with other men from all kind of classes of, of society and structures of society and i think it does them good to go away from the mother's apron strings and fend for themselves and i wish that my kids could do that i wish there was some way like that now for them to I mean, you know, they, they, it used to uh, absurd actually. That they used to give you a medical to go in the army. That wasn't what you needed. You needed a mental, yeah. because the only people who cocked it up in the army or were cocked up by the army were the kids who mentally were unstable to go in. In any case, in, in other words, the kids who really couldn't take that form of discipline, the shouting and the screaming, the absurdities that happened. You know, but they were the the tiny minority. For the majority of lads that I knew, certainly it was a tremendous benefit for them and great fun. But do you great think fun. children then today, I mean, you uh, remember your childhood with a lot of fondness? I do. I mean, the days at the cinema and, uh, and all the rest of it. Do you think in our more sophisticated society today, children have a, a more difficult I time? do. I do. Yeah. I had a very simple childhood, and at least I had a childhood. I think the trouble today, Peter, there's so many children, is that they miss out on that most lovely and precious of things, which is childhood. Yeah. They're made to be adult too soon. But, and is that, and does that not come with material goods as well? I sort of thing. It's, it's a, a motorbike at 16, yes, a car a, at 18. Or it's all of society. It's the hard sell of society. I mean, look at the... Look at the adverts on television any night and see what they're aiming at and see what they're selling, what bill of goods. You know, it's... it's I just very saddened no, by it yeah, all. Yeah, I agree, because there's very little mystique left in the world. Very little. Look at sex. Oh, I mean, that's a classic example. You'd give me a headache. No, I wouldn't give you a headache. Oh, I'd prove you shot. Go and hit the, no, you've put me... <laughs> you always say things like that well, when it, it's my it, turn to it's play. It's true, but look how that's sorted. See, there's nothing mysterious. There's nothing left to learn about it. Now, you're a great flirt, and you're self-professed. What is your... You're talking about lo love. Where, what handicap would you say if you're getting really down to it? Now, there's nobody around. What? What's your handicap? Talking well, about love life. Oh, I'm definitely off, 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 off scratch. Flush? Not scratch. Oh, you lie. I get a course them actually. Give you them lie bag. <laughs> what a lie bag. <laughs> what do you think this is? It's not all that far. No. Oh, I think I've hit that too one strong, too far. It? Right over the back. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, oh, it's on the edges. See that? I've put it too far it's on the back of the green back it's all right green. but i just let the hands come in a bit too early and it just climbed and it's gone a bit too far 
But the idea was good. Now I changed there from a, from a pitching wedge, which is one of the most lofted, thinking about a nine, thinking about an eight, and then at the end trying to play one really controlled shot, which I just flew it a bit too hard. What do I take for you, do you think? For you? No. Yeah. Well, well, I would say, do you reckon that's the length of a nearly the length? No, it's not as long as a football pitch, is it? 80 yards, is it? It's about like a minute. Yeah. Well, you're on a bit of an upslope. Now, here again, you've got nothing in your way. Except, uh, nothing in your way. Always just come up ahead and just have a look. See, there's no bunker in front of you. So if you can get one going straight, it should trundle up onto the, onto the green. I would... Uh, Use a summer. Yes, but go down the sh grip the club a little bit shorter. What down there? Yeah, try and be positive with it. I mean, it's no good gripping it shorter and then sort of babying it. Go down the shaft, try and be positive and make a definite, you know, little bump. When you're getting up with a lie like this, where, where do you. Now, you want you... a little bit more weight on your, as your left handed, on my your right, right foot. My right foot. So you, that's it, you sort of. Li that's it. Not, not too much, otherwise, you see, if you overcorrect, you just make a fault with a fault. Yeah. Make another fault. Uh, uh, just keep, feel you've got a touch more weight on your right leg and just break the wrist and just play a nice firm little bunt. That's not a bad shot, it may just miss the... Yeah, well done, Michael. Well done. Just Good. on the green, that's all right. You know, you've got a little bit of cut on that one, but you see there's quite a stiff breeze coming across here. Yes. Now. Right. Damn it, you're on the green for one. <laughs> one net. I don't know why I'm so generous. It runs right. in the family, I guess. We must go back to your thing about child, childhood and yes. children today. I think that generations should argue one to the other. I think that, that my son should think I'm a boring old fuddy-duddy and that I don't understand. And I think that I should be, you know, the old sort of aggressive dad who knows better than oh. they ever will. No, but that, I'm pleased when I was six yeah. foot two when I was a kid, I'll tell you as well. Yeah, Not the well. little short bobbies you see now. <laughs> <laughs> No, I think it's healthy. And all the policemen had grey hair and medals on the chest. <laughs> That's right. Now, Barnsley, you see, when I used to watch Barnsley play at Oakwell when I first went there in the 40s and the 50s, Barnsley was second division. Average gates, 22,000. One policeman, P.C. Williams. And he used to walk around the ground and he used to stand and go like that. And you came. They'd take you down the tunnel, they'd put his hand on you, and he'd just kick your backside as you went through the door and say, I'm watching for you next week, lad. That was it. I mean, amazing. Now, look, look today when you go to a football match. It's unbelievable. You're standing on my line. I'm know. sorry. I'm doing it deliberately, too. I know you are. Go on. But, I mean, it, it's astonishing, you know. I mean, you're like caged monkeys, aren't you? Oh, Any yeah. Any ground you go to. But your tales of, of, of Skinner Normanton, is he still alive? Well, there was, in fact, indeed a Skinner Normanton. There's Sidney Albert Normanton, to give him his proper name. Sidney so. Albert Normanton. Yes. I mean, is he alive and yes, well and living well in Barnsley? Yes, drives a was driving a coal lorry for the National Coal Board the last time I heard of him. He was, I mean, he made your Norman Hunter look like a, a pansy. He's the hardest man I ever saw. But you see, the difference in those days was that every team had one hard man. One hard man. Today, they all do a bit. But do you think he imagined himself as a hard man? Or has oh, he, he gone was. through since he first read your, your piece about him and, and talked about Skinner Norman? Do you think he secretly might hate you for making him appear to be a bully? Oh, no, he wasn't a bully. He was just a chopper. <laughs> he was a hard man. He was, a, he was a, a destroyer of delicate inside forwards. I've seen inside forwards in the day when they used to have them. They were the kind of grammar school boys of football team. They were slightly intellectual, with longer hair and things, oh, a bit yeah. delicate constitution. And I've seen them playing behind their own goalposts. What, to Skinner, keep out of his... Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> they became centre-backs when Skinner took the field. Now then, come along, trusty blade. Oh, that could be in. That's a good one. Oh, it's not. No, it stayed left. Oh, that was a bit quicker than I thought. Steady the buffs. Oh! Oh, that's oh, you're giving oh. me you're giving me a slight chance. I reckon you can go in from there. It's you again, you haven't lost a turn. Just mind that little pebble looking for a little something there. That's it, yeah. Oh gold. You still got that for the hole, sir. Now that's fairly straight. Makes little difference the way I put Oh no, you've got a good line, you've just got to get the speed.
Well, that's not... I'll have to give you that. Thank Pete. you. So, you did, in fact, get your six net four. Me? Now, I'm faced with this for a half. What a good oh, shot, Nerves eh? of steel, eh? Nerves of steel. Nerves Jeez, of when steel. it counts, the big nerves at the Nerves of... Well, if you... Listen, I'm not having you gallop, galloping away with all the kudos for the beer. Because you, over the last 25 years or so, and your journalism and your television and everything, have been immensely, I think, privileged to meet so many yes, interesting people. Absolutely. What degree of them have been a disappointment to you? All the great heroes, isn't it? I, I think, mean, you know, my, I think the general rule is that you should never get to meet your heroes. <laughs> what you discover is that they're only like you, really. Um, probably a bit more talented or something, but, you know... They're the well, first speaking other sort. people's words, you mean, and not yeah, their own? Yeah, and, and not being very um, interesting people, per se, you know. Um, of all the people I've met, I think that, of my heroes, I think only about 5% measured up to expectation. And who was the pinnacle then? Who was the one that really... The one who exceeded expectation was Crosby. Yes. Ex but you are Dame on. Edith Evans. Was oh, she, yes. Well, she was lovely. But what happens dog. when people sort of see a show and perhaps it's not gone for whatever reason as well as they think it should have done? What about their criticism of you? Do you find that... Do you find you've got broad shoulders or do they go a bit... I think they're broader now. a bit. I think no. they're broader now than they used to be. I think that... Um, as a journalist, uh, I came in for more flack than most people because there's an awful lot of jealousy within the profession about me because I got out from under, if you like, and I went into... You mean from the critics? Oh, crit sure. Oh, absolutely. I mean, a lot of the flack that's been flying around recently has been done by people who ought to know better, actually. But, I mean, I'm copying a lot more than most because, you know, I'm Park here used to be in Fleet Street and we got out of it. I'm not lunchtime with booze anymore, you see. Uh, they think you're a bit of it grand, you mean, or...? What? Or, or successful is another word for it. Yeah. yeah, and that's. But that I mean, I mean, uh, but I, I used to respond and react to it what, aggressively. Not, yes, very aggressively. I used to try and get back at them by writing and or whatever, and inventing all kinds of characters with absurd names, you know, sort of parodying them. But today, I mean, I just uh, take it philosophically. I mean, it, it really doesn't bother me today now. But once it used to, but not not anymore. But uh, that's only happened in in the last several few years. Yeah, yes. I mean, to start with, I was flavour of the month, you know. Yeah. When yeah. I did cinema, I mean, they couldn't write uh, nice enough things about me. And then as soon as I did my talk show, one of my first series of talk shows, um, one critic actually wrote and said, I wish I'd got shares in him. Uh, eight weeks later, and the series had been a success and we'd done some very good shows, he wrote the most extraordinary column in which he said I was the most absurd, silly man who'd ever been on television. <laughs> but if I'd have failed, you see, yeah. I'd have, they'd have been a lot more generous. Yeah, well... It's something you live with. I'd like to have them here trying to get over this wall. Now, this is a very spectacular hole. 410 yards, the par four. This tee was put in only six or seven years ago, or maybe not as long as that. They took the trees down ahead. It's 185, 190 yards to the actual fairway. And then it swings around to the green, bunkers left and right. And still the green's a little bit hidden for the second shot. Now, this is going to... This is going to test you a bit here. So, uh, <laughs> so you yes. dormy one. I'm, ho I'm hoping to get out of jail here. Give him the trusty three iron. No, oh, it's a good no, it's hit. Gone. It, you've gone over the tree. Gone right into the. I don't know. Oh. Did did you see that bounce? On the fairway. I think, it's well, I think so. Yeah, I think you're all right there. Straight down the middle. This is going to be it. That's the oh, one. Oh, that's a good one, I think, unless it's a bit too far right over the trees and far away. That wasn't bad. That wasn't too bad at all. Now, I think we'll go the pretty way, around the edge of the lake. Right. Yes, there's a forward tee, which is... Uh, and, of course, there's the, the Holy Well, the Hollin Well, just round the corner, yeah. which you've got to have a look at. Actually, you are, I think, a very lucky lad. You've come right. over these trees. Well, right. look here, sitting up like a coconut. <laughs> what you could have been in. That is very fortunate. I say... That is very so fortunate. So what do you reckon? 
Well, look at this. You've right. got this gorse in front of you. Right. So you've got to get over there. There's no good popping it in there. So you want a lofted club. You've got, uh, you've got two strokes. You one up. So a lofted. You what have you got? Look, uh, sand iron or sand wedge iron? or something. Yeah, that one. And just, uh, just get it up. Just watch the ball again and use the club head. A little bit of weight on the left foot. That's all right. That's out anyway, isn't it? That's all right. You're there for nothing. <laughs> That's right. The game starts here. <laughs> now, the big problem here for you are the two yeah. bunkers, some 150 yards, 60 yards up the fairway. Right. So you need to play short of those, right. so you don't really want to hit your Sunday best and reach them. So I would say with a wind behind, you can favour the left-hand bunker. See the green drops away, there's a bunker on the right too there. Just play it nicely up the fairway. And just, again, use your swing, take your time. Nice, keep a nice firm grip, grip it with the fingers, both hands. Well, uh, nothing to be squirted. too proud of, but... <laughs> <laughs> Any of the children taking up sport? Yes, the, uh, well, all of them are, actually. Yeah. All of them love sport. My oldest boy's off to uh, college, where he's taking a four-year course, the degree course in, a three years, in four years, in, uh, in the Midlands. Hey. And he's... Um, and it's a four-year course designed for people who are very good at... At sport, yeah. so they can they can play more sport during their degree course. You think? How have they coped with you uh, sort of becoming successful in early middle age? <laughs> I mean, they cope I well. I think pretty well. I mean, I've always thought that the problem, one of my theories, has been that it's not been other people's children who've been their problem with my kids, their attitude. It's often been teachers I've found. But what teachers their envy? Mm. I don't know it's envy. No, I don't know if it's envy, Peter, or not. It's just that. Sometimes there have been one or two occasions when I felt that they've handled the situation wrong just because it's my child. Do you There's think either too severe or too easy? Too severe, I yeah. think so. I'll show them. That's right, sort of thing, you know, spoiled brats, you know. I don't think my kids are spoiled, actually. But well, uh, they're quite parents pleased with do. them. Yes, I'm quite pleased yeah, with them. I, I'm, with, I'm pleased with mine. They sound too complacent. We keep writing for money, but I'm quite... <laughs> <laughs> so now then, here. wind behind. Yeah. I think... I don't know why I'm giving you all this advice. I, I think a seven iron, a seven iron. A but seven you iron. can favour the left of the... Everything falls that. left to right. So you see the bunker here in front of us. Aye. If you go over the middle of that bunker, or even if you go almost to the left of side of it, unless you go miles too far, the, or the ground will swing the ball round to the flag. So just pick the spot over the middle of that bunker and just give it a nice, firm seven iron. Seven you realise, of course, this is my third shot, and I've still not passed your drive. Ah, but that was a, that was a bit special, that mm. one. But you've got two strokes. Yes. Well, I'll just pick your spot because you, I'm going to wriggle out of the net here if you're not careful. That's two left. Oh, that may be. Well, it depends on the bounce. Oh, look at it, it's coming in. It may be a bit short, but it's not bad. Not bad at all, not bad. Thank you, sir. One, two, three, four. He's there for two. Is that a wedge? Yes. The old soup and veg. Yes, I do. Now, see, the danger here. The danger for me is I hit a good drive. Right. But I'm a bit right. Now, I've got to come in, really, across the edge of the green. And it's so easy, a slight misjudgment, and it, the ball drifts away into that bunker on the right. How far is it, would you say, that? It must be 100, 100 yards. A little, 110. 110 yards. No. Get up. That looks good. If it's up, it's a good one. Beautiful shot. Go on! Oh, I thought it was a little, wee bit shy. Online. But Whoa, 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 don't come back in the bunker. Or well, do you think you could have used another club, perhaps, or what? I could have just taken one more. Mike, you've been enormously successful, and your programmes have been successful. And uh, although you've had your critiques in the past, 
you know, you've done a tremendous thing. What about the future now? I don't really plan for the future, but I guess I've got to know. I mean, I'm 44. There aren't too many 55-year-old talk show hosts lying around. They're not exactly thick on the ground, are they? <laughs> so I think for the first time in my life, I've got to sort of plan ahead. Well, I, I've got a kind of little fantasy about going for a long, long time. I'd like to go back to where I came from in more senses than one. I'd like to go back north and live oh, yeah. up in yeah. North Yorkshire, somewhere around about where you live, that yeah. area, which I think is beautiful. I like the people tremendously as well in the area. And I'd like to go back professionally, in a sense, to where I started. And I'd like to take uh, on a, a little local newspaper. Like some They'd all be swallowed up then, they're by Lord Thompson or <laughs> well, something. Well, I don't know. You know, it's just a fantasy. I'll probably never do it. But um, that's how I really, I, ideally, I'd like it to sort of uh, to fade into middle life. <laughs> yeah, but, but do you feel that you should? Uh, or might have, or have you dissipated great writing talents? Would you like to create, you know, whether it's a great yes. cookbook or cricket book or whatever? I don't think I've written as much as I ought to have done. I think I write better than I do anything else. I've got two books I'd like to write. One is I'd like to write a very good cricket book. And secondly, I'd like to write a book which would be autobiographical. I know the title, it's called Like Father, Like Son. And it'd be my dad as a minor through the 20s and the 30s in a pit village in Yorkshire, and me through the 50s in the same village. Uh, uh, it'd be a nice idea, that, you know, two well, do it, do it, my boy. <laughs> Just do it. Do it. Yeah. It's like this shot here, it's easy. Don't, don't hang it. about. Now then. Now, we're, as we lie, you realise that. I thought I was very close to the pin. You, your ground goes left to right. You don't want to flow. I mean, you can bumble it all along the ground if you fancy you it. Take I'm a leave you on your own. Well, up uh, there. You play your own game, lad. Well, I can't do these chippy shots. Well, I'll try bumble it, it then. All but right. You've got to get you down. these. You can, there's no disgrace in taking a putter, but just look at the slope of the ground. You've got to aim it three or four feet left of the flag. Oh, it's turning some idea of the pace, some of the idea of the pace of the ground. No. Oh, you could have done with a bit more. That could be with me. Now you've. Oh, let's do it. Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. Not bad. No, oh, it's not bad. You see, that was a very sensible shot you played there. There's nothing in the way. Nice moan fairway. Right. That's all right. Why try and play the most difficult shot? I think I shall take the putter. <clears throat> oh. Ooh. Oh, that's gone on a bit too. <laughs> oh. I didn't mean to go as far past as that. Would you like the flag out? I would, sir. As will I. Stroke's gone. You're one up. Don't like it. I hate it. Oh! Oh, 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 oh. you what, you've got a good idea of line. You were a bit speedy. There may be a bit more work in that yet, young man. I thought you'd give me that. Well, I'm, I'll give you that if I hold this. <laughs> oh, oh, a little bit short and quick. Very Thank good. Thank you. <laughs> Very enjoyable. I'll give you that bit now. You have to good. work hard. They never believe I hold I enjoyed all, these, that. all these putts. Tell me. Well, we're going to play a few more holes. I hope you've enjoyed being with us on this lovely golf course at Hollingwell. We'll be back again next week, here again, and playing with me will be Mark McCormick. Till then, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Come on. Bye -bye. <laughs>